everything collapsed on me and I was buried in wood and um, insulation mainly um, but um, but I was able to you know, I crawled out of out of that. The remnants of Debbie taking aim at the Northeast now, including this house in Pennsylvania. The biggest threat now is the slow moving rain and flash floods in Maryland. A tree smashed into a home, displacing a family of six. I saw a tree right there in my living room. I mean, the first thing that came in, it could have hit me. That's when my wife was shaking because she thought that the tree had fallen on top of me. More than a half foot of rain fell really fast. First responders had to rescue people from water that was too high to drive through. But it doesn't take a major storm to bring the risk of floods to your neighborhood. Climate change means flooding even without that extra rain. Yeah, ABC's chief climate correspondent, Ginger Z, explains why. We expect flooded streets and heavy rain when a hurricane or tropical storm comes in. But the flooding you see in this image has nothing to do with a major storm. Look, the sun is shining. This is known as high tide flooding. Human amplifying climate change has made sea level rise faster, and that causes coastal flooding even during relatively quiet weather conditions. As we have more water in the oceans from sea level rise, it means that there's more opportunity for that flooding to impact properties that are further inland that wouldn't have been impacted by water when they were at lower levels. Now, add a storm like Debbie into the mix. Extreme rainfall on top of sea level rise makes an ideal scenario for severe and deadly flooding. In a coastal, beautiful, historic town like here in Savannah, Georgia, and when you've got a tropical storm out in the ocean, it pushes water up these waterways. That's where we talk about coastal flooding or surge. But then you'll have fresh water falling, lots of it, inland, and then it tries to get down these rivers and can't. Flooding then is inevitable. However, flooding is inevitable in so many cases. You don't need a tropical storm to make flooding in a town like this, and a lot of that has to do with sea level rise. Since the year 2000, having high tide flood events has been three times more likely along the southeastern coast. In a place like Savannah, Georgia, the sea level has risen more than 11 inches in the last century. That's a lot, and a lot of that happened since 1960. But we anticipate by 2050 to have at least another 11 inches. That means that we'll have as much sea level rise in the next 30 years than we have in the last 100. And this isn't just a problem for Savannah and Charleston. NOAA data shows a significant increase in coastal flood events in places like Boston, Atlantic City, Galveston, and San Diego. The data analysis firm First Street has found that sea level rise is already putting more people at risk during storms and high tides. As we've seen more and more of this data become uh, available in recent years, uh, we're finding that people are, are actually quite shocked and absolutely concerned about the flood risk that they have. Porter says as far as a homeowner goes, it's up to us to reduce our risk of flooding. But the best approach overall will be governments making broader infrastructure improvements. Homeowners can do things, simple things like clean their drains. They can, they can do things like install pumps. They can do things that are more expensive, like raise their home. With this Climate Minute, I'm Ginger Z. Well, Kentucky is one of the most at-risk states for flooding, and we aren't even coastal. In 2022, Floyd County, Kentucky declared a federal disaster during the flooding emergency. It was the 13th time in 12 years that Floyd County declared a disaster. People often think of hurricanes or tornadoes as the most damaging disasters, but eight of the nine counties with the most federal disasters were in Kentucky. And top agencies like FEMA and the EPA released a report in 2022 predicting flooding. Here are the four big takeaways. In the next 30 years, sea levels will rise on average 10 to 12 inches. By 2050, they expect the floods to happen 10 times as often. Then they say emissions matter. They predict such an increase in sea levels rising, likely because of emission rates. As the planet warms, the sheets of ice melt in Greenland and Antarctica. And lastly, these agencies must continue to track progress. The report says new technology allows them to follow and study climate change in a way that's never been possible.